the questions. I mean, I've, I've done. All right, this is my second segment uh, talking about my transition from religious to atheism. Now I'm going to talk briefly about salvation, uh, what the witnesses believe um, about how you get to make it past the end of the world. Uh, first, I want to go to the Bible, uh, 1 Timothy 2, 5. It says, there is one mediator between men and God, a man, Christ Jesus. Uh, another, John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the Watchtower's view on that uh, can be seen uh, in the Watchtower, uh, December 1st of 1981, uh, page 27. It says, unless we are in touch with this channel of communication, the faithful and discreet slave class that God is using, we will not progress along the road to life, no matter how much Bible reading we do. So basically, what the witnesses are saying is that it's not Jesus that gets you um, salvation, it's the faithful and discreet slave class, which is the Watchtower Society. So, uh, if you believe in the Bible, then that obviously goes completely against what the Bible says. Now this next one talks about medical procedures uh, such as organ transplants, vaccinations, and blood transfusions. Uh, we can see in the Watchtower, November 15th, 1967. Uh, you can pause it and read it if you want, but basically what it's saying is that uh, the society is against organ transplants. Um, here at the bottom, concerning organ transplants, it says those who submit to such operations are thus living off the flesh of another human that is cannibalistic. In the Awake, June 8th, 1968, it says there are those, such as Christian witnesses of Jehovah, who consider all transplants between humans as cannibalism. So in those two publications, it's making it quite clear uh, what the society's stance is on organ transplants. Uh, it doesn't give any exceptions, it just says that they view it as cannibalism. Now in the Watchtower, uh, March 15, 1980, it says regarding the transplantation of human tissue or bone from one human to another, this is a matter of conscience by each one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So since the last uh, publication that I mentioned, they've turned their belief to it's a matter of conscience, and then in today's publications, organ transplants are standard procedure. Uh, so they've progressed to the modern world um, in that sense by now, but my problem is with the, the witnesses chalked that up to, again, receiving new light and um, God giving them new knowledge. But the problem is, is because of those changes in belief, the witnesses are responsible for uh, countless deaths from people that did not get organ transplants uh, because the society said it was wrong. Um, so it, it's good that they've changed that belief, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't escape the fact that many people died because uh, they had the wrong, uh, the wrong belief in the first place. And the same thing goes for blood transfusions. Um, for as long as I was witness, blood transfusions were uh, condemned no matter what. Uh, it did matter the reason uh, you could not get a blood transfusion. And you still can't, uh, but the witnesses are starting to let certain uh, parts of the blood be used. Um, and so, you know, but again, that could have saved lives before. It, it, nothing changed with the blood, it just the society changed their belief again. Um, same thing with vaccinations. Uh, 1931, Golden Age, February 4th, it says vaccination is a direct violation of the lasting covenant that God made with Noah after the flood. Uh, in 1952, it says, is vaccination of, a violation of God's law forbidding the taking of blood into the system? It says, after consideration of the matter, it does not appear to us to be in violation of the everlasting covenant made with Noah. So, again, same thing. A change of belief, uh, 
no big deal to them, but lives lost for others. Now we're on to college. Uh, growing up, I was always um, pushed away from college, from the Kingdom Hall, from the witnesses, and uh, especially in my younger years because they believed that I wouldn't be around for college, that the world would have ended, so there's no point in planning uh, for the future. And we can see here the, the first the first one in the, the Watchtower, March 1st, 1969. It, specifically says, do not pursue higher education. There's very little time left. Make pioneer service, the full-time ministry, with the possibility of Bethel or missionary service, your goal. So, awake, uh, May 22nd, 1969, it says, if you are a young person, you also need to face the fact that you will never grow old in this present system of things. Why not? Because all the evidence and fulfillment of Bible prophecy indicates that, that this corrupt system is due to end in a few years. Now we're on to 1992, the Watchtower of November 1st. This magazine has placed emphasis on the dangers of higher learning, and justifiably so, for much higher education opposes the healthful teaching of the Bible. The, the reason they're not wanting you to go to school is if, if you go to college, then there's a good chance that you're going to find out that what you've been taught is, is not true. Uh, this next one, uh, independent thinking. Uh, when it comes to other religions, when uh, the witnesses are out preaching, uh, they always preach that independent thinking is a good thing, that you need to look outside your religion. This is what they're telling the, the people they're, they're preaching to. Uh, you can see Watchtower, November 11th, 1963. It says, it is not a form of religious persecution for anyone to say and show that another religion is false. Why should anyone practice a religion unless he is convinced that it is true and right? And that's a huge thing with the witnesses, is uh, keeping you immersed in the publications of the witnesses, uh, not straying outside. I mean, I wasn't, you know, you're not allowed to hang out with non-witnesses, at least not on a, an intentional or a regular basis. Uh, you're not allowed to read any other church materials, anything that opposes the organization. The next one, The Truth That Leads to Eternal Life, 1968, says we need to examine not only what we personally believe, but also what is taught by any religious organization with which we may be associated. Are its teachings in full harmony with God's word, or are they based on the traditions of men? And another one, Is This Life All There Is, 1974, it is obvious that the true God, who is himself the God of truth and who hates lies, will not look with favor on persons who cling to organizations that teach falsehood. And really, who would want to be even be associated with a religion that had not been honest with them? So again, that's, that's what the witnesses are, are, are talking about to people they're preaching to, but it, when it comes to people that are witnesses that are already in the organization, they have a different line of thinking. And we can see that uh, here in the Watchtower, January 15th, 1983. It says, avoid independent thinking. How is such independent thinking manifested? A common way is by questioning the counsel that is provided by God's visible organization. Which is crazy. Right there, they're telling you to not, to not question anything that the society says, to basically follow them regardless of what you think. You're not supposed to think about it, you're supposed to just do it. Uh, any organization, uh, anything you run across in life that tells you to avoid independent thinking and to not question what comes down from the higher parts of the organization uh, is clearly something you don't want to be associated with. Now this is dealing with the witnesses, whether they believe they are prophets or not. So in the awake, March 22nd, 1993, it says, So does Jehovah have a prophet to help them, to warn them of dangers, and to declare things to come? These questions can be answered in the affirmative. Who is this prophet? This prophet was not one man, but was a body of men and women. It was the small group of footstep followers of Jesus Christ, known at the time as International Bible Students. Uh, today, they are known as Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. So there the witnesses are saying that they are the prophets of God. But in 1993, in the Watchtower of April 1st, 
It says, Jehovah's Witnesses, in their eagerness for Jesus' second coming, have suggested dates that turned out to be incorrect. Because of this, some have called them false prophets. Never in these instances, however, did they presume to originate predictions in the name of Jehovah. Never did they say, these are the words of Jehovah. The Watchtower, the official journal of Jehovah's Witnesses, have said, has said, We have not the gift of prophecy, nor would we have our writings reverenced or regarded as infallible. That shows in May 15th of 1947, page 157, it says, The Watchtower does not claim to be inspired in its utterances, nor is it dogmatic. August 15th, 1950, the brothers preparing these publications are not infallible. Their writings are not inspired as those of Paul and the other Bible writers. Uh, if you ever were associated with the witnesses, you know that um, not to be true, um, that they are infallible until they decide otherwise or change their beliefs. The other part of is incorrect is where they say the reason they're not a false prophet is because they never said these were in the words of Jehovah. Uh, if you say something is going to happen and you tell your followers that it's going to happen, it doesn't matter how you word it, uh, it's a prophecy. It doesn't matter you're the one saying you're inspired by God and you're telling people when something is going to happen. Uh, you could slice it apart and uh, try to rationalize it, but it doesn't make it true. One thing that the witnesses uh, the society tries to downplay is their past belief in uh, pyramids and uh, numerology. There's several places where it talks about how they're getting to their dates and that's how they originally came to the 1914 date and uh, a few of their other dates is by measuring different passages in the pyramids. Uh, one of those is Thy Kingdom Come, 1910 edition, page 342. I'm not going to read that, but it basically gives a rundown of addition and subtraction and uh, crazy math to reach their prediction. Now on the Watchtower, May 15th, 1925, says, The Great Pyramid of Egypt, standing as a silent and inanimate witness of the Lord, is a messenger, and its testimony speaks with great eloquence concerning the divine plan. However, once the 1925 end of the world prediction did not come true in Watchtower November 15, 1928. And in the previous, uh, one of the previous quotes had mentioned uh, the pyramids being a silent witness before the Lord. In Watchtower November 15, 1928, which is only three years later, it says, it is more reasonable to conclude that the Great Pyramid of Giza, as well as the other pyramids thereabout, also the Sphinx, were built by the rulers of Egypt and under the direction of Satan the devil. Then Satan put his knowledge in dead stone, which may be called Satan's Bible, and not God's stone witness. What they're saying is because it's 1928 now, their prediction did not come true in 1925, so instead of their admitting they're wrong, they're saying that, well, Satan built the pyramids and put the dates in there to trick uh, the witnesses. Now, there's many other beliefs that I had a problem with with the witnesses and um, many other reasons that caused me to leave. Um, but the ones I just talked about were, were really the main catalysts for everything else. And with just those few, to me, that was enough to say that I was in the wrong place. That's all I'm going to do on the witnesses right now. If there's any specific things that anyone is wanting to know. Uh, I've done a crazy amount of research. I've got most of the books that I've done the research in and can probably answer any other questions, so just let me know. I'll be posting more videos on religion in general uh, in the next few days or week or so.